Hey, what's up guys? It's Victor here back with another video. And today I want to go over a topic that I've been getting a lot of questions about, and that is the potential complications that could occur during a leg lengthening procedure. Um, I do want to state that although these are possible, uh, they're pretty unlikely. They're, they don't, they're not really common. They don't happen too often, um, but that doesn't mean that they can't happen. So without further ado, I want to go ahead and jump right into it with number one, and that is complication being a non-union. Um, when your bone is distracting at a certain rate, um, you, you, although you don't want it to heal or fully heal because you want to get your full length and your height, um, you do want to see, the doctors do need to use x-rays to see that there are certain bony fragments or cortices uh, somewhat forming so that that way um, they can tell that, you know, the oh, non-union will not occur. Now, if they do notice that a non-union is about to occur, they may stop you from distracting or, you know, getting your length for a little bit so that some formation can happen. Um, but if that doesn't work, then they may do something called a bone graft um, alongside a compression, which means that they may go to your iliac crest, um, you know, take some of that, that fresh bone, um, break it up, and then f put it into the gap of whatever bone in your femur or your tibia that's not healing correctly and uh, help the osteoblast form new bone matrix there um, and then compress it so that it can start to you know heal um, and then maybe do another uh, osteotomy and put a new pin in and then you know start the distraction over again okay so that could be a complication that could occur it, again it's very rare so you don't you shouldn't worry too much about it but just do your best to do the distraction correctly according to the doctor's rules, okay? Um, all right, so next up is going to be that of a early or premature consolidation. Now, it's the opposite of a non-union, meaning that your bone doesn't, the non-union is when your bone doesn't heal, and a, pre, a premature consolidation is when your bone heals too quickly. So, <clears throat> um, when your bone heals too quickly, you know, then that, that prevents you from getting your full height. So what is a, a counteract, uh, what, what do the doctors do to counteract this? Um, basically, they're gonna either speed up your distraction rate, meaning usually you'll go, you know, one millimeter per day. Um, that's 0.33 millimeters three times a day or something like that, because they study the average bone healing. Um, but they may have you go faster. They may have you go at, you know, half a millimeter three times a day because you heal quicker than the average person. Um, that, again, this is a, this is a very rare uh, complication. And if it happens, usually they're going to see it based on the x-ray checkups that you go in for, okay? All right, so next complication is that of blood clots um or you know thrombosis thrombosis um which could eventually lead to embolisms okay so basically when your your body when you break your legs your body forms blood clots and these blood clots could technically break off and you know flow through your bloodstreams, your veins and whatnot and arteries and, and cause blockage. And uh, they could even go into your lungs and cause pulmonary embolisms and whatnot. Uh, but let's not scare you too much because again, this is very rare. That's why they have you get up and move around right after the surgery. Okay, because they want to get that blood flow moving. They don't want any of that, you know, blockages occurring. So you don't have any complications like that because that is a serious complication. And again, it's super rare. So again, don't worry, okay? Um, Next up, the, I'm trying to think about the ones that my doctor told me. So it's stiffness. Uh, stiffness is basically, you know, it's self-explanatory. If you're not mobile and you're not doing your therapy um, or you're in your rehab, then you could lose your range of motion, essentially. Um, you know, and it could be even permanent if you're not, you know, on top of it. So you've got to do your therapy. and You've got to be really, really consistent with it, okay? Um, I can't stress it enough. So that's that's pretty much one of the complications that you could lose permanent uh, range of motion. Um, you get drop foot. You could get all kinds of like tightness in your hamstrings, all kinds of stuff. Because again, you got to remember that you're you're lengthening your bones and the muscles, tendons, everything else is getting super tight and taut. So if you're not very flexible or doing your therapy to loosen them up as well, then um, they could they could technically dislocate joints. They could tear. They could break your bones, they could tear the hardware, all kinds of stuff can go wrong. So definitely do your therapy, keep that muscle, those tendons, that soft tissue, nice, pliable and loose, okay? Um, another one is the obvious one, infection. Um, this one has been, you know, lessened or decreased by the use of internal and inter intramedullary nails like the, the precise and the stride nail. However, you know, um, there are still 
potential cases, especially within the first two weeks or so while you're healing the incision sites. So you really need to be on top of keeping them clean. I always tell people to, um, you know, use clean to clean them. Um, well, not me telling people, but like you, you should, this is what I did. I cleaned them. And, uh, if you're going to, you know, go out somewhere or like, you know, go around, you need to put on loose uh, pants that are clean and, you know, that are not gonna infect the area, okay? Exa just for the first two weeks, if you have the intramedullary na nail. If you have the um, external fixator, then in that case, you just need to do, do what the doctors tell you to keep the incision sites where the pins are inserted clean, okay? You have to prevent infection because that could ruin the whole thing. And um, it's a lot more likely with an external fixator um, uh, but you just need to be aware of that. Okay. All right. So next up is going to be hardware failure. And this is basically, will the rod screws, um, you know, break essentially. Um, well, I got to say that this one is again, pretty unlikely. It can happen and it has happened. Um, especially if you put too much pressure on the limb, too soon um, against doctor's orders. That's why you really need to listen to them um, exactly as told. But again, it can still happen. Um, you know, a broken screw, again, pretty easy fix for the doctors to do. Uh, but if the rod gets broken or, you know, a screw lodges the rod in a different way or whatever, then you, again, that's something that your doctor's gonna need to deal with. Uh, but if it happens, it happens. They're just gonna have to go in uh, fix the situation and uh, keep you moving. But honestly, it's pretty unlikely. I mean, nowadays they have the precise, uh, I mean, the uh, stride nail, it's much stronger if you're getting that done. If not, you're getting the precise, um, still pretty strong. These are like titanium and then steel, uh, you know, stainless steel, uh, you know, devices. So these things are pretty darn strong, um, but you know, it can happen. So just be aware of that as well, okay? Um, Another one is nerve and blood vessel damage. Um, you gotta realize that when you're uh, lengthening your legs that these nerves and blood vessels are also getting lengthened and sometimes they can get caught up between muscles, um, they can get torn because they're getting lengthened um, and then they're gonna try to reroute themselves and stuff like that but sometimes they can get permanently damaged and uh, that can be loss of uh, you know sensation in that area so you just got to be aware that that is a potential complication with this as well I just want to be open with that um, for a while I did lose a little bit of feeling on the outer just over the fibular head of my left um, upper tibia or uh, upper left uh, lower leg but it came back over time again nerves can you know reroute themselves and stuff like that but you just gotta be aware that that is a potential complication. And doing therapy will help tremendously. Doing your flexibility uh, stretches and all that, big time, okay? And uh, proper nutrition can also help, okay? All right, so those are the main complications, but another one is a lack of positive mindset. I gotta say that this is not only physical complications that can occur, but a uh, mental and psychological aspect as well, because a lot of times this process is very stressful and you're worried about all the physical uh, problems that can occur, but you gotta be worried about, um, can you stick with this process for the next three, four or five months uh, while you're recovering because it's gonna get hard. It's gonna get really hard, but if you're, if you're tough stuff and you think you can make it through, um, I promise it's greener on the other side, but it, it can get hard. And if you don't feel like if you, you can handle you know, pretty intense pain and you know, therapy and lack of motion and just lack of mobility and not doing your normal life, uh, your activities during normal life and everything on a daily basis, then you may want to sit this one out and not do the surgery because it's it's a it's a big uh, a big uh, yeah big complications that can occur. Okay, guys. All right. So those are the main complications that I've been asked for. If you have any other uh, complications, leave them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your story about what you think that could occur during the, the surgery, and I'd like to answer some questions if you have them. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I found are the most common that are not common complications, if that makes any sense. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I got. Um, I appreciate you guys checking out the video and uh, go ahead and hit that like button if you found this useful. Uh, be sure to subscribe because I'm gonna have more videos on a weekly basis. And then um, what else? Head over to Cyborg for Life, listen to the podcast. I'll have the link in the description as well. And uh, yeah, until next time, Victor from Cyborg for Life, signing out, peace.